One of the things that fascinates me is the information explosion, as it's called. Uh, there's a French economist named Georges Andela who uh, converted everything into binary units, which you can do on a computer, and estimated how much information we had at the time of the birth of Christ, which is a Western imperialist way of looking at history, dating everything from the birth of Christ, but that's the way he did it. And he did provide us with some interesting figures. You take, uh, I call this the jumping Jesus phenomenon because Andela didn't use, uh, didn't name his unit of information, so I decided it needed a name, and units are named after important people, like the Farad is named after Faraday, the Watt after Watt, the Volt after Volta, and so on. So I decided we should call the unit of information a Jesus. All the information we had in 1 AD, uh, which is the first unit Andela used, I call 1 Jesus. Uh, the question is, how long did it take to double? It took 1,500 years. And by 1500 AD, we had two Jesus, or twice as much information units, twice as many bits in computer terminology, twice as many bytes, actually. Um, uh, the, uh, right after that, in one breeding generation, 17 years, Martin Luther hung his 95 theses on the door of the church. Wait a minute, that's 95 theses, I beg your pardon. And we had the first successful Protestant revolution. In another breeding generation, 1534, uh, Henry VIII uh, started the second successful Protestant revolution. And the next 200 years represented continuous religious war in Europe. By 1723, Jonathan Swift made the very true observation, we have enough religion to hate one another, but not enough to love one another. Ask Salman Wushti about that. Anyway, by 1750, information had doubled again, and most of the people, uh, the intelligentsia anyway in Europe, were getting sick and tired of these religious wars, and Freemasonry was invented as a secret society to unite people in spite of their religious differences. And the French encyclopedists were writing books about history without uh, giving religion any importance at all, discussing economics and other factors in history. And uh, we had four Jesus. And in the next uh, half a century, we had James Watt invented the steam engine, and we had the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, followed rapidly on the political level by the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the First Mexican Revolution, the Bolivar Revolutions in South America, the United Irish Uprising, which was the closest thing to a successful Irish Revolution until 1916. The whole world began turning over, and pretty soon the kings were reduced to just titular heads or abolished entirely. Uh, capitalism uh, replaced feudalism, industrialism replaced agriculture. The whole world changed. That's what happens when information doubles. Just like the Catholic Church, hegemony over the Western world collapsed after the doubling in 1500. And the next doubling only took 150 years, and by 1900 we were living in an entirely different world, a world people in 1750 couldn't begin to imagine, except the wildest among them, like Condorcet, who predicted most of what happened. He's always listed as the most unrealistic of the French revolutionaries because he thought it would all happen in the next 20 years. Well, it took 150 years, but most of his utopian predictions came true. Uh, by 1900, uh, people were trying to get off the uh, air, uh, off the ground, and uh, by 1905, the Wright brothers did it. In 1900, quantum mechanics began. We were the first step towards the atomic bomb. The next doubling only took 50 years, and by 1950, we had twice as much information as 1900, or uh, 16 times as much as at the time of Christ. Uh, the, the information acceleration was itself accelerating. Uh, by 1950, it had doubled again to 32J, 32 Jesus, and we had had two world wars, the rise of fascism and the collapse, the rise of communism without its collapse yet. And uh, the whole world had changed. By 1950, everybody accepted change as natural and normal, and the, most people were beginning to ask, what kind of changes can we expect next? 
except for the conservatives who kept saying, how can we turn things back to the way they were in granddad's time? But, which you can never do. Once the genie is out of the bottle, you can't put it back in. Information intrinsically tends to produce more information. It breeds faster than rabbits. Because if I have one unit of information and you have one unit of information and we talk to each other, pretty soon we've got four units of information, not two, because they breed, they interact. Information sheds light on other information. Uh, that the doubling between 1900 and 1950 was the first time in history that a human being had, could live through a doubling of information. All the others were longer than a human lifespan. That one was well within a human lifespan. The next doubling only took 10 years, and by 1960, information was up to 64 Jesus. And uh, by then, everybody was expecting uh, the change to accelerate uh, even faster, and we had a worldwide youth revolution, which nobody understood at the time, and nobody fully understands even yet. Uh, by 1967, information had doubled again, and by 1973, it had doubled again. Now, just imagine that. The first doubling took 1,500 years. Between 63 and uh, 67 and 73 it was only six years for a complete doubling of the information we had. Uh, they're now starting to uh, wonder how a scientist can keep up with the knowledge in her or his own field. Uh, knowledge is doubling so fast. The last person to know all of mathematics was a Russian named Ostrovsky, who died in 1918. It's now estimated that somebody who devotes their whole life to mathematics can learn maybe 5% of all the published theorems. And uh, that'll draw, that figure will drop to 2% pretty soon. Every uh, information is just, uh, mu uh, well, to go back to my own metaphor, multiplying like rabbits, so to speak, like rabbits in Australia. Uh, the latest estimate I've seen is by Dr. Jacques Valli, who runs a computer company in Silicon Gulch. He says information is doubling every 18 months, or rather he said that in 1988. I assume that now, I'm um, in 93, it's doubling even faster every year, every six months, I don't know, but it, the, the, the rate is increasing. Now, every time information doubles, technology changes. Every time technology changes, society changes. Look how the steam engine changed society from an agricultural, monarchist, religious base to a democratic, industrial, uh, secular base. Uh, look at how the atomic bomb changed the world. We came to live with dread and horror of our own governments, and we got to the point now where the world is gradually moving away from war. After 4,000 years of absolute enchantment with the excitement and fun of warfare, we're suddenly afraid of it. We know it can kill us, even if we're staying home and we're old enough to be uh, exempt. Uh, the bomb might drop on us, and so the world is moving toward peace. It didn't surprise me at all when uh, Rabin and uh, Arafat shook hands on the White House lawn. Everybody's beginning to realize how dangerous war is to us, to the whole biosphere. Now the IRA, it's revealed, has been having secret negotiations with the British government. I was joking about that after Rabin and Arafat made their first step. I said, next will be the IRA and the British government. It happened even quicker than I expected, but that's the way it is. The curious thing is that a mathematician named Gordon has published a theorem that as information flow increases, unpredictability increases. That is, the world is getting more and more unpredictable. I heard Gordon present that paper at the World Future Society in 1989, and then I flew to Europe for a lecture tour, and in Zurich people were arguing about when the Berlin Wall would come down, and they said within 10 years. By the time I got to Cologne in Germany, people were saying within five years. By the time I got to Berlin, people were saying, it's going to come down in the next one or two years. Things are really changing fast. The day after I left Berlin, the wall came down. I just missed it. But I was lucky. A friend in Berlin sent me five pieces of the Berlin Wall as souvenirs to compensate me for missing uh, seeing, coming, uh, seeing it being torn down. I got the five pieces of the Berlin Wall in front of my statue of the Buddha to remind me of the Buddha's teaching. All things are impermanent, all lines are impermanent, all separations are impermanent. Every, every border in Europe or anywhere in the world 
But I like to use Europe as an example because there are so many borders there which are disappearing now with the European Parliament and the movement toward a single currency. Every border in Europe represents a place where two gangs of domesticated primates fought until they were exhausted and drew a new line on a map. While primates mark their territories with excretions, uh, domesticated primates mark their territories with excretions of ink on paper, which are known as treaties or maps uh, that results from the treaties. And uh, all these borders, all these treaties, they're all breaking down. We saw a tremendous wave of hysteria in this country against NAFTA, but NAFTA is just part of the general tendency for all the borders to come down one by one. Uh, Perot was raving that there were six Mexicans following him around, planning to shoot him. I'm sure he thought they had mustaches, and I don't know why he didn't say so. I, I think I know how Perot's mind works. And he could visualize these six Mexicans. They all had not only mustaches, but big, black, bristly mustaches. And they all talked like the bandits and who, who pretended to be federales at the end of Treasure of the Sierra Madre. We don't got to show you no stinking bodges. And that's the kind of hysteria among the people who can't understand why all the borders are coming down everywhere. But that is the transformation the world is going through due to the information explosion, which is happening faster all the time.